Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to share with you what it is you're going to be doing in my absence. Specifically, you're going to be working on your CEJs and your roundtable discussions. And even more specifically, you're going to be peer editing one another CEJs and roundtable discussions, which would include your DQs and assessment questions. Now, before we dive into the meat and potatoes of this learning, we are going to start with a few things. So first, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to open your planner and copy down the homework exactly as it is written. Second, you're going to go to the self-management chart and you're going to mark down whether you're fully prepared for the day. And third, on the blue table, there is a packet that you need to collect. The packet is titled, or the first line I should say, says partner's name. Go ahead, copy down the homework, go to the self-management chart, collect the packet from the blue table. So pause this video and go do those three things. All right, welcome back, welcome back. Fourth and final thing before we dive into those meat and potatoes. The fourth thing that you need to do is for those of you who did not complete the homework last class, for those of you who then last class took a later missing work form, you need to collect that later missing work form and you need to place it in the homework bin. So that's the one that has your parent or guardian signature on it. Pause this video, go ahead and do that. All right, now that we have done these four things and we have set the stage for class, let's go ahead and dive in to the day's mini lesson, which is gonna teach you a little bit about the peer editing process. Let's go ahead. All right, guys, so before I start this video, let's locate this document, which can be found in the peer editing, or geez, it can be found in the mini lessons tab and it's called peer editing. Please locate this and copy this into your notebook. Let's do that right now. All right, all right, all right. Now that you've uh, copied this document, let's go ahead and get to it. So in this document, we're gonna be covering the what, the why, and the how of peer editing. So what is our goal for this mini lesson? Well, our goal for today's mini lesson is to construct a foundational knowledge with the peer editing protocol and corresponding ground rules. And why are we taking class time today to peer edit one another's work. Well, there are three reasons. First, the gradual release of responsibility. Students must be in charge of their learning. You must own your learning. And this peer editing is a step in that direction as you are responsible for giving one another feedback as opposed to all the feedback just coming from me. Two, editing one another's work helps students understand their own writing. The research shows that writers who give feedback on other students' work show significant improvements in their own writing. Third, the growth mindset. This process reinforces a very important truth. We only get better through feedback and constructive criticism. We must be open to this feedback so that we can maximize and unleash our potential. And now, having covered what we're doing and why we're doing it, let's get into the how. In other words, how is it that we're going to peer edit one another's work? So we're going to start with the protocol or process of peer editing, and then we're going to go ahead and get to the ground rules. So protocol. First, you're going to exchange papers and peer editing documents with your partner. In other words, with your partner, and I'm going to tell you how you're going to pick your partner in just about a minute. With your partner, you're going to exchange your peer editing packets that you collected from the blue table, and you're going to share with them. You're going to hand over your printed out CEJ and your printed out roundtable discussion. With that first step done, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to work through the checklists in that peer editing packet. And again, you're going to let the checklists guide you. Uh, for example, you're not going to go ahead and just write down anything that you feel somebody should work on. Instead, you're going to specifically use the language of the checklist. Um, and you know what? Why don't I actually pause for a second and show you what I mean by this? Boop -ba -doop -ba -doo 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 -doo. Here it is. So with this, guys, you're going to see the language of the checklist is exactly what it is that we want to guide us in our work. In other words, when you write down one thing that you love or one thing that uh, excuse me to work on, you're not going to write down, for example, spelling or punctuation. And you're not going to write that down because here in the checklist, there's no illusion. There is 
nothing that speaks to punctuation or spelling as being one of the criteria for success. So let's make certain that we are sticking to the language of the checklist. And going back to OneNote. Next, as you're letting the checklist guide you, number three, complete work on the checklist. So yes or no. I'm going to ask that you not put anything in the middle. The middle kind of signifies an ambiguity that might not be clear to your partner. So just mark down yes or no. Fourth, identify one thing you love and one thing to work on. Again, I'm going to go back here and see if I can get it. There it is. Again, use the language of the checklist. For example, if your partner has three MLA citations, the one thing you, you love could be, my partner has three MLA citations. I'm literally using the exact language from the checklist. I am not interpreting it myself. I am not putting it in my own words. Finally, fifth, when finished, hold your peer editing conference. During this time, you will share your feedback. In, in other words, you're not going to just share feedback at random times. You're going to complete work on the entire packet. Having finished the entire packet, then you're going to go ahead, and that's when you're going to dive a little bit more deeply into the rest of the conversation. So with that shared, guys, let's move on to the ground rules. In other words, we now know the process, but what are the rules that dictate that process? Well, rule number one, all caps, a bunch of exclamation marks, no apologizing. Yeah, that's right. I yelled that. And I yelled that because it's so important. You are not criticizing the person you're with. You are simply giving constructive criticism and next steps and things to work on uh, for their work. You're not giving them feedback. You're giving their work feedback. Never apologize for the feedback, for the things to work on that you're giving to a partner. Number two, listen Listen, listen, then ask questions. When you get to the fifth step of the protocol and you're actually having your peer editing conference, don't just, you know, uh, try to talk. Don't just try to speak. Don't try to have a conversation. Listen to the feedback you're getting. Really listen to it. And don't defend it. Just listen and then ask questions. Number three, don't argue. Guys, you are here just to listen to what it is that your peer editing partner is saying. You don't have to necessarily accept everything they're saying. Maybe you disagree. But this is not the time to sit there and argue with your partner about whether or not you do have three perfect MLA citations. That's not a great use of our time. Your partner is doing you a service, doing you a favor by taking their time and helping you to improve your work. Appreciate that. Don't argue with them. Fourth and finally, the discussion should not be in your words. Your feedback should not be in your words. The feedback needs to use and utilize the language of the checklist. Make certain that you are using the language of the checklist. Now, what you are going to do, obviously I'm not here to answer your questions, so what you're going to do is in this space provided, you're going to write down one thing that you now know about peer editing. Once you finish writing in this space, you're going to look around the room and find a partner who's also finished. When they're finished, find that partner, go somewhere in the room with that partner, and share with one another um, what it is that you now know about peer editing. And guess what? That is your peer editing partner. So once you have shared your response to this first question, go ahead, get your, uh, get your peer editing packet, take out your CEJ and your roundtable discussion stuff, and then go ahead and follow this protocol, follow the ground rules, and get to work. When you finish the peer editing process, and once you've actually finished going through entirely this packet and having your discussions, you can then go ahead and move on to actually applying the changes. So if you have like 20 minutes left in the period, you can spend 20 minutes implementing and applying the revisions and changes suggested by your peer editing partner. Uh, excuse me, your peer editing partner. So you guys. I'm going to assume you are ready to go, and with no further ado, get to it.